everybody and welcome back to Mr. Anderson's Algebra 1 Lessons. <laughs> Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to find the GCF of algebraic expressions. And so I just wanted to go over a couple examples with you. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about finding the GCF of just two regular numbers. Now I want to talk to you about finding the GCF of algebraic expressions. And these are things that have a variable tied to them and so we need to be able to find these algebraic, uh, GCF of these algebraic expressions in order for us to um, be able to add algebraic expressions together, solving for x and y and whatnot. And it's really good practice uh, looking at the multiples and greatest common factors of things like this because it really um, is used a lot in more higher levels of algebra. So <clears throat> I'd like to take a look at two examples today. Um, first example I'd like to take a look at is uh, we have the expression 24y squared and we have the other expression 16y. So uh, the way I've been uh, teaching my students is we first uh, find the um, prime factorization of the number given to us and then we can factor the um, variable as well with the exponent. So with this guy I'm going to find the prime factorization of 24 and so I'm going to split that up into any factors that I'd like. I'm going to start with uh, 6 and 4 and uh, these two are not prime numbers which mean they are um, composite. A prime number is a number that has uh, two factors, one in itself and 6 has more than two factors so I'm going to factor it down even more, which goes down to 2 times 3, and then number 4 can factor down into 2 times 2. So I'm really going to be, uh, there's my prime factorization right there, 2 is a prime number because it has only two factors, 2 and 1, and then the other uh, number 3 is a prime number because it only has two factors, 1 and itself, and uh, once I find the prime factors, I am going to rewrite them so that it's easier for me to set up the factors of this y squared up here. And uh, I tell my students, this is asking you a question. Um, <clears throat> y times how many times, or y times itself how many times equals the exponent. And uh, they see that there's a two up there, so that means that there's two y's. Um, and I know there's another way to say it, and we'll talk about that in a little bit later, but um, this, right here is the prime factorization of 24y squared. Okay, I'm going to kind of split that in half for the moment. And now I need to find the prime factorization of 16y. So once I find, uh, split that up, this is a composite, I'm looking for primes. Um, I'm gonna go with four times four, and then four can split up into two times two, and this one as well. So again, the prime factorization down here is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And now I just need to bring the factorization of y down. Now I notice there is not any exponents, so really there's only one y. There's an invisible 1 right up there. So I'm just going to bring that down here, and there we go. So once I'm here, um, I tell my students, okay, we need to look for the common factors because that's a big part of finding the GCF. We're looking for the factors they have in common and um, I noticed that they have uh, some twos in common. In fact they have three twos in common. Okay and so I noticed there's no threes in common but I do notice that there is a Y in common, so I'm going to circle that as well. And now I just need to rewrite it. So I got both sides, they look ex the same. Um, and to find the GCF, I really need to multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times y. And so if I do that all together, I find that my GCF, or the greatest common factor, is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 4 times 2, which is 8 times y. So this right here is the greatest common factor 
of 24y squared and 16y. <clears throat> so I'm going to do one more example here tonight and I'm going to actually do an example where there's two variables involved and um, to kind of help us with that uh, we're going to take a look at this equation down here. Let's do um, 65 m times n to the third and 65 n to the third. Okay, so we have that. Um, <clears throat> and again, I'm looking for prime factorization. So first I'm going to look for the um, prime factorization of 65 and go from there. And this one's going to be a little unique because we have 265. So they're going to have the same prime factorization of the number, but the variables might be a little bit different. Okay, so 65, I know that 5 times 12 is 60. So that means 5 times 13 is 65. So I'm just going to do that over here. Um, 5 is a prime number because it's divisible only by 1 and itself. And 13 is a prime number because it's only divisible by 1 and itself. So that worked out pretty slick. Prime factorization of that was actually really easy. And it's not always going to be like that. So don't be thinking that your examples at home are going to be way easy all the time. So after I do that, I'm going to um, rewrite it down here so that I can now do the factorization. I see that there's only one M, so I'm gonna bring that down. And now, a little trick, I have three N's, okay? So, N cubed is really saying that you multiply N by itself three times. That's really what exponents are used for, is repeated multiplication. So, make sure you're thinking about that whenever you see an exponent. An exponent's really telling you um, what number times itself gives you that many times. So in this case, n to the third power is n times n times n, all right? Now over here, got the same thing, bring down to five, got the 13, and I don't have an m, so I have the n, n cubed. So that's just n times n times n, sweet. So now I just need to find what they have in common. And it's not very hard to see once it's split up like this to see what they have in common. They have the 5 and the 13 in common, and then they have three n's in common. So really, that is uh, the GCF. It couldn't be any easier. The GCF of this one is going to be 5 times 13, which is 65. And three n's multiplied together gives you n cubed. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you find the GCF and you have two, two variables here and one there. And so uh, this has been uh, Mr. Anderson's Algebra 1 lessons, how to find the GCF of algebraic expressions. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy your day. Please stop by next time.